Hey there. Today we're going to talk about how to actually use Google Search Console data combined with GA4 data. Because if you've ever connected GSC to GA4, you would know how strict Google is when it comes to showing what's happening on your website after somebody comes through organic and actually connecting these pieces of information with the actual click, the keyword that user typed in before they actually clicked on a result and came to your website. So if we look at the reporting section here, and if you actually connected the Google Search Console, which is done in the admin panel, I'm not going to go through that right now. But once you connect the GSC to GA4, you start looking at these reports, for example, queries here. And it's nice because it imports all these pieces of data into GA4 about search clicks, impressions, CTR, and the average position. But if you want to add additional metrics into this table, none of the metrics from GA4 are available. So that's why I'm going to show you how to use Looker Studio and combine GSC and GA4 in order to understand how do actual keywords perform when it comes to conversions on your website. Let's go into the Looker Studio and I'm going to show you we already have this nice table prepared, just like in any good cooking show, but I'm going to show you bit by bit how it's done. Practically, the basis of connecting these two sources of information is a landing page, because that's the only common identifier for both the Google Search Console data and GA4 data. So what do we do here? We import two data sources into the same Looker Studio report. Google Search Console and uh, GA4 and join them on the condition of a landing page without a domain. Now, a landing page coming from Search Console has the domain and the page path, but the landing page in GA4 has only the path, which is why we have to write this formula, the substring of landing page from GSC, this is the length of the domain for this particular website. And I also trimmed it because I was running into some issues. You can easily copy paste this formula, only have in mind that 31 is actually the length of my domain. So you make sure to count the characters from HTTPS all the way to the last trailing uh, slash. Because we need that trimmed landing page without a domain, to be able to connect these two tables, and this is how you do it, from these options on joining these two data sets, inner join works the best. Simply put, this means that it's going to only include the rows where the join key is accessible in both tables. So you join by this key, save it. Uh, these are the dimensions and metrics that I used. Query. Well, that's the keyword that we want to measure performance of. Uh, a landing page and then URL clicks. Uh, CTR is probably unnecessary. I don't know why I kept it here, but I'm not going to delete it right now because Looker Studio starts acting weird when you turn off the dimensions and metrics as you please. For example, I'm pretty sure that I'm not using URL CTR and there was just an experiment that I was working on while playing with this report, but I'm not going to turn it off. Here I have the filter for no zero clicks and it's basically excluding all the rows in the GSC data set where URL clicks are equal to zero, meaning I don't want to deal with the data that did not end up in a click going to the website. On the other hand, we are having the landing page as the dimension here for GA4 and we also included total revenue, number of purchases, views and sessions. I'm also pretty sure that views is not being used here, but let's leave it as is. Here are the filters that I installed on this one. So I wanted to exclude all the sessions that had no revenue. And I also limited the scope for session source medium to Google organic. Another thing to pay attention here is that we don't want to hide repeated join fields because sometimes we want to check whether LPs without a domain that we extracted from GSC are matching the landing pages that we're looking at in GA4. 
A particular issue that I ran into while working on this report was that sometimes page paths did not end in slash, either in GSC or in GA4, which caused this table to have less data than I was expecting. And that's why I had to leave both of these metrics, even though they are repeated fields, because I wanted to check them side by side and see what's wrong. Now, what happens when we join these two sources of information? We get access to all these metrics and dimensions here, and we can combine them in a single table. So I structured the table like this. I want to see the keyword, and then I want to see the landing page. This row, number one here, is the unique combination for this particular keyword. Unfortunately, you cannot see it, but it's a brand keyword, obviously, and the home page. Next row surfaces different combination. It's a different keyword while the landing page is still the home page, which is why we are seeing the total revenue on that landing page from organic visits equal to what we were looking at in the row number one. So the column number four total LP revenue represents all the revenue that was generated on sessions that started on the landing page indicated in column number two while column number three is URL clicks, and this data is coming from Google Search Console. Now, if you look at the uh, column number five, this is also coming from GA4, and these are all the organic sessions that started on homepage. That's why we're seeing the same number. So 29,000 of the sessions started on homepage, and out of this 29,000, 22K were triggered by this brand keyword. 4.3 thousand were triggered by this keyword. Now we're seeing the homepage again at the position number eight. And then this keyword actually triggered visits to homepage 800 times during this time period. And while the total LP revenue was the same as row number one and number two, we were able to calculate based on the ratio of the visits that this keyword brought to this particular page. And since 800 visits out of 29,000 is somewhere around 3%, we can assume that 3% of this total revenue made from sessions that were starting on that landing page belong to this keyword. That's why I have it here, 53,000 Swedish kronos. That's the actual formula that I use for keyword revenue. You see, it's URL clicks divided by all the sessions that landed or started on that page times the total revenue that was made on that particular page. Now, this table is sorted by keyword revenue, which gives you the nice opportunity to identify non-brand keywords, such as this one, for example, or these ones here and figure out how they fit into your SEO strategies or even Google Ads strategies because these keywords are super useful for advertising on Google as well. Now, I created the Evil Twin report, which is called Bad Keywords, and is different from Good Keywords list because I didn't have total revenue. Obviously, these are the keywords that brought visits which didn't end up in a purchase, so I don't have a revenue metric as something quantifiable that I can measure the performance of the keyword. So I had to use something different, as you will see. Bad keywords were relying on something called negative SEO index, which is URL clicks divided by sessions that they produced. So the more sessions a keyword brought to a particular landing page without ending up as a purchase, the higher the negative SEO index. It's important to note at this point that this particular blended data has this specific filter called no revenue sessions. So we excluded all the sessions that had total revenue greater than zero. So let's go back to the good keywords report. If you watch this video up to this point, Thank you, and I'm going to show you now by far the best tactic to use this data. Practically, 
we export this into Google Sheet, we're gonna click on the three dots here and export this data into a Google Sheet. Now it's sending data to Google Sheets. Can take some time depending on how long your time range is. I want to delete these middle columns and leave only keyword and the revenue. And now we see all the individual instances of keywords bringing individual purchases on our website and the value. Now we take all this data and turn it into a pivot table. And this pivot table will now have individual keywords as rows and keyword revenue as value. At this moment, maybe there's a better way to do this, but I'm just going to select all this. Actually, I should have pasted only values. And then I'm going to freeze the top column. And sort this table sort sheet the biggest to the smallest maybe apply some formatting here I reduce these decimal places and format this as currency obviously these are not dollars but here I see the list of the keywords and the amount of the revenue they brought so all in all if you are in the SEO business or you're doing Google Ads, I'm sure you will find a way to use this trick of unifying GSC data with GA4 data. And if you do, please leave us a comment, like the video, or subscribe to this channel. Talk to you soon. Bye.